bus crash kills 27 people on their way to forced quarantine. President Biden says the U.S. would defend Taiwan. Definitely. Maybe. And China is funding new research involving monkey brains. What could go wrong? Then more on this week's China News Headlines. Welcome to China Uncensored, I'm Chris Chappell. This week, a Chinese bus in Guizhou province crashed, killing 27 people and injuring 20, which is a tragedy in its own right. But that bus was taking people to a COVID quarantine camp. And while the crash killed 27 people, only two people have died from COVID in that same province since the pandemic struck almost three years ago, at least according to official statistics. And now there's a public outcry. Because people didn't get on that bus willingly. They were being forcibly hauled off to government quarantine. And it's not even clear whether these people even had COVID. Authorities just said the people on the bus were pandemic related. So they could have just been people from areas where cases were detected. Here's how China's zero COVID policy works. Even people who test negative, but are just close contacts of COVID patients can get hauled off to quarantine. And a close contact doesn't even mean someone who lives in the same apartment. It can mean anyone who lives in the same apartment building or who happened to be in a grocery store at the same time as someone who later tests positive, which is why you constantly see videos of people trying to get out when some place goes into lockdown, like this Costco. Really gives a new meaning of going on a Costco run. Basically, because of how broad and strict China's zero COVID policy is, this bus crash could have happened to anyone. Which is why the Chinese public is seeing itself among the victims, a country being held hostage by the government's harsh policy. People protested online, spreading news of the bus crash, saying, we're on that bus too. They shared on social media an old article with the headline, evil is prevalent because we obey unconditionally. According to one writer, the saddest part is not that we are witnessing pointless deaths, but that we're living lowly, obedient, and twisted lives, and dying of lowly, obedient, and twisted deaths. And this outpouring of grief and rage finally prompted the Chinese Communist Party to reflect on its policy and... just kidding. First, they tried to channel all that public anger toward local officials instead of the party. Then, they punished three local officials censored the public outcry, and did literally nothing to fundamentally change their zero COVID policy. So, not the change people were looking for. Never is. Speaking of terrible COVID policies, this drone footage posted to China's version of TikTok has revealed a massive COVID quarantine center in Sichuan province. It has enough beds for 14,000 people. It looks like a bunch of shipping containers put together. So out in the middle of nowhere, the Chinese Communist Party has built a giant camp designed for a large concentration of people considered undesirables. What could possibly be the problem here? Also, speaking of terrible COVID policies, Hong Kong. A national security law in 2020 put Hong Kong completely under the iron-fisted rule of the Chinese Communist Party, and that means it also has to follow zero COVID. So while most other countries are returning to normal, Hong Kong is still, for the most part, locked down. And China's zero COVID policy has cost Hong Kong its status as a global aviation hub. Because who wants to land at the Hong Kong airport to make a simple flight transfer only to be detained after a routine temperature check? And even worse, the zero COVID policy has driven out international sports events, including the Hong Kong Marathon and the World Dragon Boat Racing Championship now, obviously, being under the Communist Party rule has also cost Hong Kongers their freedom of speech, right to protest, and any semblance of democracy. But to lose the dragon boat race? Brutal. And other signs that Hong Kong is doing just great. Hong Kong police have arrested a man for playing the harmonica during a vigil for Queen Elizabeth. The harmonica player was arrested after he played the song Glory to Hong Kong. It was a popular protest anthem. 
People start singing along and then shouting, Hong Kong at oil. All very seditious. And after the break, President Biden gets tough about Taiwan, I think. Welcome back. In an interview this week on the CBS show 60 Minutes, President Joe Biden said the U.S. would defend Taiwan if China attacks. For the fourth time. Would U.S. forces defend the island? Yes, if in fact there was an unprecedented attack. So unlike Ukraine, to be clear, sir, U.S. forces, U.S. men and women, would defend Taiwan in the event of a Chinese invasion? Yes. Wow. This is the clearest statement Biden has made about the issue. Finally, a solid commitment that will deter China from invading. I just hope nothing changes that. After our interview, a White House official told us U.S. policy has not changed. Officially, the U.S. will not say whether American forces would defend Taiwan. Well, at least there's some good news about Taiwan. That interview with Biden was aired on Sunday, and then on Tuesday, U.S. and Canadian warships sailed through the Taiwan Strait. It was the second time this year, and it was meant to demonstrate that the Taiwan Strait is international waters, not China's waters. It also backs up the strong commitment that President Biden made and then awkwardly got walked back by his underlings. We told you in June about Chinese influencer Austin Lee, a.k.a. China's Lipstick King, and how he got taken off the air and disappeared when he live-streamed an ice cream dessert shaped like a tank on the eve of the Tiananmen Square Massacre anniversary. That got him yanked offline. He uh, hasn't been seen since. Well, good news for all you China Uncensored fans who love to buy lipstick. Austin Lee is back this week after a mysterious three-month disappearance. His first two-hour livestream attracted 63 million viewers. His makeup, skin care, and clothing products were once again snapped up by eager fans. And how did he explain his strange disappearance at the hand of the Chinese Communist Party? He didn't. Not a word. He kept those lips shut. And after the break, China is investing millions in new research involving monkey brains. What could go wrong? Welcome back. This week, a U.S. Treasury official made a statement about China's foreign debt practices, calling them unconventional, which is a bit like calling Hannibal Lecter's eating habits unconventional. The U.S. Treasury counselor said that as many as 44 countries each owe debt equivalent to more than 10% of their gross domestic product to Chinese lenders. But Beijing has consistently failed to write down debts when countries needed help. So basically, he's calling China a loan shark, but he did it nicely. A new report by Strider Technologies shows how scientists at America's top nuclear lab were recruited by China to design missiles and drones. The report describes what it calls a systemic effort by the government of China to place Chinese scientists at Los Alamos National Laboratory, where nuclear weapons were first developed. Basically, the Chinese government pushed scientists to work there, where they got inside knowledge about America's advanced military technology. The report says that 162 of those Los Alamos scientists have already returned to China. The Chinese government paid some of them hundreds of thousands of dollars to move back. It's part of the Chinese Communist Party's Thousand Talents program. And the report says now these former Los Alamos scientists have made considerable contributions to China's hypersonic missile and submarine programs that present an array of security risks for the United States and the entire free world. Good job, everyone. Speaking of research that couldn't possibly backfire, China is investing more than $700 million on brain research, including studies involving monkeys. It's called the China Brain Project. Now, before we get concerned that the Chinese Communist Party might start doing weird genetic experiments on monkeys, don't worry. They've already done weird genetic experiments on monkeys. Chinese neuroscientist Mu Ming Pu is one of the project leaders. He spent four decades honing his skills in the U.S., and he's even a professor emeritus at UC Berkeley. Now he lives in Shanghai. In 2019, his team in China made headlines by combining cloning with gene editing 
to produce five genetically identical monkeys that lacked a key gene regulating the circadian clock. How'd that research go? Well, firstly, those five monkeys were all that survived out of 325 gene-edited embryos. Secondly, those five monkeys weren't the lucky ones. See, by removing the gene that regulated their circadian rhythm, the monkeys exhibited sleep disorders, increased anxiety, and depression. Well, it doesn't take a neuroscientist to predict that, but it does take a neuroscientist to do cruel genetic experiments on monkeys to prove it. Moo Ming Pu may do some of his new research at the International Center for Primate Brain Research, which is funded by the Shanghai government. That center is led by another neuroscientist, Nikos Lugothidis. Lugothidis moved most of his team from Germany to China because his lab in Germany kept getting targeted by animal rights activists. What jerks. Well, China has a solution for activists. A final solution, if you will. And now, with activists and really all ethical concerns out of the way, I'm sure the Chinese regime's $700 million investment into brain and monkey research will provide a bright future for all of humanity. Just like the Wuhan Institute of Virology's investment into gain-of-function research. And this show would not be possible without viewer support. Join my exclusive 50 cent army by contributing directly to the show on Patreon or Locals. And as a perk, I answer my supporters' questions at the end of some of these episodes. Today's question comes from Bill Nur on Patreon. In your episode, China's COVID lockdown stops people from escaping earthquake. At 737, you report on speech therapists in Hong Kong being persecuted for publishing a book about sheep and wolves. Where did you find the translated copy of that? I really want to read it. Thanks. Keep up the good work. Well, Bill, there are actually three of those books. For those of you who don't know, this is a book series written for children aged four to seven. It depicts evil wolves going after innocent sheep who try to flee. The wolves are the CCP and Hong Kongers are the sheep. At least, that's what a Hong Kong judge decided. He convicted all of the book's authors with sedition. If you want to read those books, Hong Kong activists have translated them to English and posted them online. I put links to all three books in the YouTube description. Thanks for your question, Bill. And thank you to everyone else who supports us directly through Patreon. Patreon is a way for you to contribute a dollar or more per episode and interact with us. The link is below. As you know, we rely primarily on viewer support for this show. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching China Uncensored.